Hi, my name is James Gwartzman. I'm CEO of PlayFab, and today we're going to go through a demo showing you how you can use PlayFab with Unity. This is the same demo we gave at the Unity Unite 2014 conference. Uh, it was a lot of fun to give, and now we're recording it again for you guys so you can watch it and more easily follow along with the different steps involved. Uh, the goal of this video is when we're done, you should be able to follow along with our steps and recreate this entire thing yourself and in the process learn a lot more about how to use PlayFab with Unity. So, okay, let's take a look here. The very first thing you're going to do uh, is you're going to need to create an account uh, with Unity if you don't already have one. So if you look here on the screen, uh, we're going to go ahead and say get started and we're going to fill in a brand new account. So James Gortzman. Now you need a unique username and uh, I'm going to have to make a new name for myself because I've already done this a few times. So let's call this uh, Gortzman5. Uh, email has to be unique, so I'm going to call this James, I don't know, 20 at playfab.com, United States, I'm in Washington State. Give myself a password, easy to remember. Uh, well, actually, easy for me to remember, you'll want to secure a password for yourself. Put your name Playfab, agree with the policies, create an account. Okay, I now have an account. And the first thing I need to do in this account is provision uh, a new game title in this account. This is where this, this game title is going to store all the information for your new game. So it's pretty important. So let's click Add Game. Give it a game title. This is the game title for your game in the system. So we'll call this something like uh, PlayFab uh, Angry Bots Demo. Hit Add Game. And now I've got this game. So what we're looking at here, this is called the PlayFab Game Manager. The Game Manager is where you administer and operate and configure your game. Uh, it's probably the, the, the real heart of our entire system. Um, you're going to use this in two different ways. When you're first building your game, you're going to use this tool to configure your game, set it up, manage it, and so forth. Uh, and then once your game goes live, you're going to use this tool to operate and manage your game uh, after launch. Uh, all the different members of your team will be coming into this tool to manage the game. They'll be doing things like customer support, uh, game design, visual, um, viewing analytics, and so forth. So it's a very important tool. Um, so while we, uh, so this is right now is empty. Um, and before I start showing you how this tool works, let me go ahead and now get and download to my hard drive all the files we're going to need for the demo. So uh, if you go to take a look here on Docs, you can see we've got a bunch of documentation. If you click on the uh, Unity uh, uh, link here, it's going to take you to an area on GitHub where we have uh, our Unity SDK. And actually, what I'm going to do is uh, let's actually let me show you something else. Let me first go to developer.playfab.com, uh, click on SDKs. This is actually a list of all the SDKs we have. Um, so that Unity uh, SDK was on here. Uh, you also can see we have the Angry Bots sample app on here. So click on that, and this is going to show you the actual Angry Bots demo here in GitHub uh, that has all the files we need for the demo. Uh, and so this is actually the demo that we're going to download. So I'm going to do that by running the GitHub client here on my Macintosh. And I am going to, I've already uh, set this up to point to uh, a PlayFab. So I'm just going to tell it to go ahead and create a clone of the, let's find it here, the Angry Bots demo. Uh, create a clone, tell it where to save my hard drive, clone. Okay. And this is now going to go ahead and get and download all the files to my hard drive that I'll need for the Angry Bots demo. That'll take a little a few minutes. While that's going on, let's go ahead and let me go back now to my Game Manager tool. Uh, log in the account I just created. It's a game, Gortzman 20, right? Let's take a look if I got that right. No, I think it was Gortzman 5, actually. There we go. Okay, here's that account we just created. Here's that, that game. So now I'm in this game. It's empty right now. Uh, we're going to have to go in and actually configure some properties here for this demo. Um, before that, one thing I'll show you, see this properties tab? This is pretty important. This properties tab, this is all the information that we're going to need in the demo to actually connect to this game. So you can see that every game gets a custom title ID. In this case, my new title ID here is 6F89. And I have this custom endpoint. So all of the API calls, all of the function calls that our demo makes are going to be going against this custom API endpoint right here. And then I'll talk, explain what the secret key is in a second, but that's going to be used if you're having a multiplayer game server uh, connecting uh, to, the, uh, to the code. So uh, let's go ahead, and one of the first things typically you do in a game 
is you configure the virtual currencies. And so in this case, uh, we have no virtual currencies created yet in the game. So I've clicked on, uh, on, on currencies here. I'm going to add a new virtual currency. I'm going to call it, if you give it a code, a two-digit code, we'll call it GC. And I'm going to call this the game currency. It's not a very original name, but that's what we'll call it. And the initial deposit, this is how many credits or how many units of this currency uh, a brand new player account is going to get. And let's just go ahead and say that new players will get 2,000 GCs when they create the game. So that's in there now. And uh, so that's now set up. Uh, I'll just go ahead and see if it's done downloading the files. Uh, it is, which is great. Now you'll notice that this syncs to the master uh, branch. And really quickly, I'm going to sync now to the special branch called the Unite 2014 Demo Branch. So let me go ahead and do the sync. This is just a few minor changes we made to make it a little bit easier to uh, for this demo. That's now done. I think we're good. Uh, and so the final piece of, of this chapter of our video, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm actually going to um, open that up in Unity. So let me run Unity. And I'm going to open uh, the project we just downloaded, which I put here. There it is right there, the Unity Play 5 Anger Bots uh, project. Open that up. And this will also take a, a little while while uh, Unity has imported all these files. And while that's going on, I'm going to do one more configuration step before we, we end this chapter. If you go back to look at the folder we just downloaded, just a second here. If you look at that folder here, you'll notice there's this file called democatalog.json. So the next step in configuring a game um, is you need to uh, create the catalog of all the possible items that you can purchase uh, from uh, in the game uh, from PlayFab. So PlayFab has this notion, if you go back and look at the game manager here, under catalog, manage, this is where the actual catalog lives. And right now you'll see there's no catalog. Uh, there's no items available for purchase. And so the first thing you have to do is actually create a catalog to, to, to purchase. Well, as it turns out, we've already created here for the purposes of demo uh, a, a JSON file, which is what you use to upload and, and, and the catalog. So you need to basically edit one of these JSON files in order to uh, create your catalog. So this for an example of the kind of file you would edit to create your catalog. Now, future versions of our game manager tool will have a complete graphical editor tool, make it super easy to add and, and, and edit items in the catalog by just you know clicking around within the, the, uh, the game manager. But for now, the only way to do this is by editing a, catalog, a file like this one. And, um, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to make a couple of tweaks to this one. Uh, I'm actually going to set this up as as, uh, as catalog version one, so you can have multiple versions of a catalog. In this particular case, uh, this is actually the first catalog I'm uploading, and so making sure that every item in this catalog is uh, is is catalog version one. And that's the. And let me just quickly show you what we have in here. We have in here uh, a bunch of items for sale. Uh, this first one here is a health pack. Uh, it sells two health packs. We have. Uh, another item which is the identical health pack class and this one actually has five health packs for sale. Uh, we have here uh, um, uh, an ammo pack which is basically a type of gun. In this case uh, 400 units of ammo for that one. Here's another gun, in this case 10 units. Uh, and then finally we have a bundle. And a bundle is an item you can buy that has actually multiple kind of other items inside of it. In this case this gear bundle has ammo pack one, two, and health pack all in one item. And you can see each of these items has a price. So, you know, 50 GCs, 100 GCs, 150 GCs, and so forth. Uh, and also really interesting is every item can have a, a custom data field. So in this case, you'll notice that the, uh, the health pack has a simple data field called icon health, which is telling you what icon to show for it. But notice under the guns here, we have a whole bunch of parameters, things like frequency 20, or damage per second 80 and so on. What we're doing here is we're actually setting properties for the gun in the catalog, which is really cool because it means later we can go in and actually edit the catalog and change the properties of the gun in the game. And that's a really powerful feature because it means you can actually add new items, add new guns, add new properties, change properties, all from within the game manager without ever having to recompile or rebuild your game, which is really powerful. So okay, so that's our, our catalog file. I'm going to save those changes I just made. And now when I uh, go into uh, our game manager, I can hit upload. I can find that file I just edited, hit open, and it's now going to actually upload that catalog into the game manager. And sure enough, here it is. I can now see my five items in the in the catalog. Um, and I can see that these are consumables, max uses two, max uses five, 400, and so forth. And there's my bundle, my war pack. 
Um, one other note just to explain to you, uh, it's really useful when you're doing this to keep open uh, a copy of, uh, of the documentation for uh, PlayFab while you're doing this because all the functions we're going to go through, they're all documented here under this web API documentation. Uh, let me explain, we actually have three different APIs that really matter. We have the client API, which is what we're going to be using today in this demo. This is the API that your game uses to communicate with our service. We have a server API, which is what you would use if you have a multiplayer game server communicating with our, with our, with our service. That's what the, the server API you would use. And finally, we have the admin API, and that's the most powerful of all. That is used to actually administer and configure your game. And that's what we use in our game manager. And typically, you would only use this one if you're building your own custom tools for administering or managing PlayFab. So that's not so, so commonly used. So the client API is the main one. And actually, if you want to see uh, where that catalog is defined, you can actually go down here to uh, get catalog items. It's the function call that downloads the catalog. And you can see that the catalog is just a, um, it's just a collection of catalog items. And so this right here, catalog item, this is actually the definition of all the properties uh, that we were looking at just now here in this JSON file. So here you can actually see things like you know, item ID, item class, uh, a custom data string, uh, and consumable. And consumable is interesting. So we already talked about how we had consumables of usage count, say, you know, say uh, two, where we had that, that health pack that actually had uh, a usage count of two. But you also can have a consumable with a usage period. So you can have a consumable, for example, that lasts for, say, 72 hours and then goes away. And that's actually pretty powerful to have those kind of um, items with a, with a shelf life like that. Uh, and then we also explain containers and bundles and some other things. But okay, enough, enough explanation. Let's go back to my catalog. My catalog is now uploaded. And let's go back to Unity. Unity is now set. Here's my demo all loaded. And so it's a perfect uh, end for this first chapter of, uh, of the video.